You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI show where we do text analytics for health. I teared up a little because I did research in this area many moons ago <laughs> and it is so much better now. Hopefully you'll tune in. We'll see you then. Hello and welcome to this episode of the AI show. We're going to learn a little bit about text analytics, but for a specific use case for health. I've got Ashley Yo, Senior Program Manager in the Cognitive Services team. He does text analytics. Why don't you tell us what you do and, and what you work on, my friend? Hi, Seth. Happy to be here and to share with you and your audience about text analytics, specifically for the healthcare domain. Uh, we have a, we, we released and announced back in July uh, text analytics for health as a, as, a, as a preview offering for our customers in the healthcare space, and for obvious reasons because of the pandemic, but we uh, we put out this uh, our product early in Ju uh, January this year, and we make the announcement in July because of the of the demand for it. Um, so, Tax Analytics for Health uh, is is uh, is a product that uh, utilizes NLP natural language processing techniques to process documents in the healthcare space, such as uh, doctor's notes, the uh, uh, discharge summaries, research uh, articles. Uh, those kind of documents in an unstructured form. Uh, I, will, I, will a little, I will spend explain a little bit in a demo about the different features uh, that this text analytics for health API provides. This is really cool, but for those that maybe don't know about text analytics in general, can you give us like maybe a minute blurb on what text analytics is? And then let's dive into how we've repurposed text analytics to do some stuff for health as you described. So let's start with text analytics. Sure, text analytics provides uh, four features, four functions, if you will, um, all of them natural language processing techniques uh, to extract information from unstructured text. Information such as sentiment analysis, being able to define or detect uh, the kind of sentiment in each of those unstructured texts, especially from social media, uh, 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 you know, text information, uh, textual information. Uh, also, we also uh, recently released something on uh, called opinion mining. That can that can tag the sentiment to each of the aspects within uh, within that text. Uh, text analytics also provide language detection for obvious reasons, and uh, we also do uh, key phrase extractions that are in within a blurb, uh, like in news news uh, news articles, um, also research papers, providing a, a, the pulling out the key phrases in those kind of contexts. Uh, lastly, the fourth feature is uh, name entity recognition, which is really key in healthcare uh, in in this healthcare feature. Name entity recognition identifies uh, an entity and uh, uh, assign them to a category. For instance, it's a person name, uh, whether it's a, an organization, whether it's a date, or e for uh, and also things like email addresses. So this is cool. So how did how did you all repurpose this stuff for health? Let's talk about text analytics specifically for health. Sure, uh, it's uh, actually not repurposed. Actually, it's we, 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 it's an extension of what we text analytics has been uh, we've been offered uh, it, it to our customers. We 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 the we partner with our team in Microsoft Research HealthNix. Uh, we started from scratch. We actually took um, a, a corporate of, uh, a set of the documents from the healthcare space and uh, asked the subject matter experts like uh, physicians, nurses, uh, researchers to annotate those documents uh, to, that are more to to, partake, to pull the things like entities relationships they are more they're relevant and critical to the healthcare space so we started from scratch built that and then using uh, the latest research for an NLP from Microsoft research uh, and built the models for that and, and that's that's really cool I love how you say it's an extension because you can still use text analytics for the other things you mentioned but now we're extending it to do specific stuff for else so why don't we talk a little bit about the features maybe some of the use cases and when people can take a look at it Sure. Uh, why don't I just go straight to the demo? So what you see here is a, a web interface, the visualization tool uh, that is provided in the container that we recently released uh, for public preview. Uh, this visualization tool will allow us to identify the features that are we built into text analytics for health. Uh, alongside this feature, this is, by the way, it's, it's included in the demo, this demo app. Uh, it's included in the container, I beg your pardon. So I will uh, select a, 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 an example text here. As uh, I just take talking about a, a, a patient history, and what you see here is just the output from the API. Uh, we 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 subject we send this text into the API. It returns is, as a JSON. If uh, for for those who understand what JSON is, and it, it pulls out four things. 
is able to identify entities related to uh, eight different categories. For instance, diagnosis, um, we have uh, body structure, symptoms, uh, and the medication as well. So they all fall into eight categories. Each category has their own entity type. Uh, so you see those being uh, highlighted in, in the JSON, but for visualization and simplicity, ease of, of use, we, we provide this UI uh, visualization tool. Uh, also, besides entity recognition, we also uh, extract things that, I that we also link the entity to what we call concepts of vocabularies that are provided in the healthcare space. Uh, specifically, if you, I, I cannot move it down, I move it down, it will disappear, but you look at ICD-10, which is the International Conference for Diseases, uh, classification of diseases, uh, and then we have things like SNOMAD, you know, this is uh, all the uh, systematic nomenclature of medicine. Uh, we also have uh, for, for medication, RX norm. Uh, so, th so each of those entities that we detect, uh, like for GERD here, we are also able to link them to all these different concepts, which, which give us a flexibility to, for, for the use cases that our customers will be interested in. If there's a particular concept that they, they, they use in their, in their business cases, then it, they just have to go find that that uh, that abbreviation or that syntax and get a code. And then uh, we also do relation extraction. So for instance, I hear there's a pulse, we identify that as a pulse, and that will give you, a, a, if you go into the UM, go into the coding system, you'll, you'll give a definition for it. But we also see that we have a measurement value for it, and we have to extract that, and we build the relationship that says this is the value of the, of the examination. Uh, we also see things like, um, that we also look at things that are negated, uh, so there's no weight loss, uh, even though the, the, the AI, the uh, API will extract that as a symptom. We, we notice that in the text it says no weight loss, we negate that. That is very critical for making a diagnosis when you're looking at unstructured text. So those are the four things that we do in, in the single API call to this, um, to, to this um, endpoint. Uh, and then entity recognition, we do a linking of that entity to known concepts or vocabularies. And then we also do a relationship extraction between those entities and the attributes. And lastly, we do negation of those entities. This is so cool for me. I, I don't know if you know this. <laughs> My first year of grad school, I took an NLP class and our job was to go through emails of disease outbreaks and literally classify it. And like, I'm looking at this here, I'm like tearing up a little bit because the way we used to do it mm. was not this way. And this is this is pretty amazing. Um, so a couple of questions about this. You mentioned that um, this is an API call. Do you have to use this interface? No, this is a visualization tool. Like I said, uh, we do can we we pre, we originally announced this as a container that you can make an API call. The container would then be you can download the container and deploy it to any of your uh, uh, environments, whether it's on Azure or whether it's local to your to your corporate environment. Uh, we 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 realized that that was some a challenge for some of our customers. So in, in a few weeks, in fact, in fact, in about 10 days, we'll be releasing, uh, announcing the release of a hosted API. Uh, and I'll, I will switch now to, to the po uh, Postman to show you how the, the APIs can Let's be do called. it. So here is a, here's a Postman, uh, uh, it's a setup. And this is uh, making a call. Again, this is uh, in, in local to my environment. Notice that the, the container is not HTTPS, but we can make this call to the similar kind of, of, of text. And I will bring, so, so in the body of your of your request, you can put up to, uh, I believe in, in the container up to a thousand documents. Uh, but again, even the more documents you, you stuff into the request request body, it's gonna take a long, a, a while a while to process. But I'll make this, uh, you know, I'll take the same request body here to demonstrate the call. And I'll send it to my, uh, to my, end, my, my container, which is in the office somewhere. And it's going to take a while. So this is a synchronous call. So once you make a request, you got to wait for it to finish, you know, for you to get the result. Um, what what we'll be releasing in in ten days is an asynchronous um, is an asynchronous API, and that will allow you to send the request and forget it, and then come back and query the, the results of the of the request. So this this right now, what you're seeing on, in Postman is um, the post uh, is a request to the container, which is synchronous. Again, you'll see that they, you'll return all this, um, the, the output related for each entity that's, that's detected. Uh, the text is the NAD, all right, this is the symptom. And it shows you the different uh, entities, uh, different concepts that are linked to it. And then it also, it also has a, a Boolean for negation. It's negated if it's not, it's false. Uh, so this is the, the output from the container. 
What I'm going to show you is the is the output. What we're going to be doing or be releasing on the 19. It is an endpoint. Uh, it's hosted. Uh, ignore the string here because this is from the, the development environment. We're in the process of deploying the production right now. It takes a few days. Um, so I'm going to send this request of, of the same body uh, or the same text to this API, uh, this hosted API. Obviously, you got to remember you got to provision a, a text analytic resource so you can get the key in order for you to authenticate to make the call. Uh, and, and again, I need to I need to make, make a point of this. This public preview is still gated. It means you have, you have to apply for access uh, be, uh, because we, we we're trying to understand what our customers' use cases. And so when you apply for access, we can we can evaluate the use cases that you uh, you're going to use for and work with you to to improve the service um, that you be you might you are interested in. So going back to this asynchronous API, this is the same request body that we sent to. Uh, we're going to make the call, and you can see that it will come back pretty quickly. Right now, you, you, it's back, but what you don't see is that in the headers, it will be a job ID, and that job ID basically is what you need to make a call to to make a get post a get call. And so what we did for for to submit this job is a post. So we do this the get call, and just paste. Just extract, you know, programmatically pull out the job ID, and insert it at the end of the original call or the original API URL, and make the same call. I call a, a get call, sorry, not post. Uh, and then you will see the output. Um, it's going to take a while to format it. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Uh, you'll see that it will show you the date that was created, and when the when the the, the date was uh, was the job was completed. More importantly, you see a status. They succeeded, uh, so it, it allows you to be asynchronous for making the call, the request, and not have to worry about it. Especially if you have a lot of documents, and then you don't want to be sitting there waiting for the synchronous res uh, response. And you can just forget about it and query and look for the status. Uh, the status would be still uh, if the if it goes from uh, started. Uh, I think I believe is uh, processing, and sometimes if it fails, it will fail because some you know you might exceed. The number of characters per document you can up, you can go up to a thousand. We're, we're looking at optimizing that for a hosted endpoint. Um, then you will come back and say succeeded. Once you succeeded, you will have the output uh, that's shown here in the same output that we saw in the container. Uh, this is all very very cool. Uh, so question: I know with with health related stuff, there is this question of privacy. Can you talk about the way that uh, this service protects customers' privacy? So first off, uh, the request for the hosted API. So the whole container is, is within your own environment. You 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 have you have control over how you protect your, your data. For the hosted API, we are a, pro a data processor, so we don't we don't persist any of it, your information you sent to us. Uh, and because it's under Azure, uh, you have all the benefits of the Azure infra infrastructure with security, privacy, compliance. Uh, we are a, a HIPAA compliant, especially when we're talking about uh, healthcare. Um, so the, the information that you sent to us, really, uh, you, we would not persist them. We, what we, our telemetry will collect is just the number of documents, how many characters uh, are in those documents. We don't we don't persist any of the content that that, that have been sent to us. Um, and and even if we uh, to the point where we, we, we can't help troubleshoot uh, past a certain amount because this what you see in the output here for this uh, for this job, you will you, there is an expiration date, right? We do we do keep it the results because we we don't expect you to. The immediately it'll be done, and you will you'll be pulling the results back. We will give you some time, and uh, you know, but part of our policy is to persist this for 48 hours, and after that it will be deleted. So once you if you send a job to us, and you you can keep checking. If you don't check uh, within 48 hours, that job the the output will be completely deleted, so that we are, will be in compliance with with our policies for privacy. Th this again is amazing, Ashley. Where can people go to find out more? Yes, you can also go. Uh, you can find out more in, in the uh, Azure document, uh, Microsoft documentation site, and look for co connective services, text analytics, and you'll find a section under text analytics for health. And again, this is a public preview and it's gated right now. But there is a there's a link in there to go to apply for access. If not, uh, I, I can you know, give the information to Seth and you'll share it. That's right. We'll put it below. Well, Ashley, thank you so much for spending some time with us. And thank you so much for watching. We're learning all about text analytics specifically for health. Thank you so much for watching. And hopefully we'll see you next time. Take care.